All right, look like we have a double sound. All right, hello everyone, peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have a good time for today. Uh, you know, the, the Mohammedan supposedly, uh, they are the one who can refute us very easy. Uh, if you remember, there's a guy, he told Fifi that he could not find my introduction in Sex and Allah book. And Fifi the fool, he believed him. So he made a challenge for me and he challenged me to show where is the introduction can be found in the book of Fathul Bari. Anyone remember? And Fifi, he said to him, thank you. In the beginning of the video, he said, actually, our friend Muslim fornication, he told me and he gave my attention to this. The same person, Muslim fornication, who got Fifi busted and he made him look like a puppy, who he challenged me and he said, if you can find it, what I don't know what he said, he, if he can find it, he will shave. If somebody have the video so we can play it. If, you, if I challenge Christian Prince, he make even a comment saying, if you if a Christian Prince can find it in Fatil Bahari. <laughs> and later we shower to him, the idiot. Now the same idiot, he came and uh, Muslim fornication and he is saying here, oh, now you are answering comment. I always answer a comment, you idiot. I answer comment in chat. I answer comment in, uh, you know, well, where are you? Why you don't post for me your Skype, little Muslim kid? And I will call you, even if you are too small. It doesn't matter how small you are, because we can make you bigger. Here he said, oh, you are responding to comment now. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You never heard of me responding to comment before? Uh, a person who come to my page every day, he never saw me responding to comment. Uh, respond to mine. Michael Abdul Masih, director of Arabic Bible out, uh, out uh, uh, reach, uh, arrest that. It's a proven theory. It is an uh, proven theory. It is false. Even if it turned out to be true, it has little bearing on Muslims faith since Muslims do not worship the moon God. That would be a blasphemy in the Islamic teaching. If we use the moon God theory, this discredit Islam, we discredit the Christians, Arabic speaking churches and missionaries thought in the Middle East. This point should not be uh, discounted lightly because the word Allah is found of millions of Arabic Bibles and other Arabic Christians material. The moon God theory uh, confuses in, in, uh, in Vedicism where Christians approach Muslims, they do not know whether they need to convince them that we worship the wrong deity or to present them to a simple gospel message of Jesus Christ. So the Muslim here is saying to me, well, this is a Christian minister. Uh, his name is Abdul Masih. And he's saying that this is a theory. And uh, there's uh, millions of Bible. Uh, they have the word Allah. But he forgot that this is a translation. A translation doesn't count for us. For us as a Christians, we go by the original. Can we find the word Allah? And then you see here, you will see that the coward, he did not even quote the whole article. Why? Because he's a coward, like he's a prophet. Let us go to the article of this guy, because as long as you are quoting him, let us quote him. And you will see that this guy is getting you busted. Oh. <laughs> This is the article, you donkey. Why you do not post it all of it? I mean, why you don't want to post it all of it? Is it embarrassing? Isn't it? So look what you you know you post for us. You post for us uh, words you like, and here he said, "Look at this, Allah and the Moon God theory." Currently, there is no ongoing debate. In whether that Allah of the Quran, in fact, uh, a pagan Arab or a moon god in the pre-Islamic times, this idea have mentioned uh, in literatures for more than a century, but only recently it has been seriously promoted. The theory uh, practically used on one leading evangelical uh, author books 
so this is not this is not true. It's not about one one uh, evangelical. This is you know this is what this is what history shows us, and we will prove it. The theory claimed that the pagan de deity moon god named Allah was married to a son, to the sun god, and then the stars were uh, his daughters. This is a theory. This is a theory. So you did not quote with this because this will make Muhammad a liar. Because if this is a theory, this is why the Quran says then that the Arab they worship Allah and his daughters. If it's a theory, you see, shouldn't we go and see who is the one was worshiping Allah before Muhammad? Those are the Arab, and this is your Quran. Hold on. Let us, let us go to the verses. And, you know, see if it's a theory or not. I don't know what happened to this website. It's not showing me. Okay, let's see. It's a theory, right? It's not in history, it's not reported, it's not exist in the Quran. It's a theory. This guy, he does not know anything about Islam, obviously, he's just a Christian minister. But if we go in the Quran, we will find the following. That your Quran confirm that the Arab, they believe that Allah have daughters. This is chapter 16, verse number 57. So the idea of our brother in Christ, which I respect him, by the way, it doesn't mean that he's not ignorant, that this is a theory, come with somebody, he made a book about the moon god, marrying from the sun god, and have three daughters. This is not a theory. This is what the Arab worship. So if you are agreeing with him, that's when you agree that the Quran, these verses of the Quran are fabrication, because this is a theory. That's what he said. He said theory cannot even be proven. He said unproven theory. But the Quran is a proven theory for you, or it's not a proven book. The Quran confirmed that yes, the Arab, they worship the three daughters of Allah, and they believe Allah have three daughters. So don't hear the question will be, okay, if Allah have three daughters according to the to the to the Arab before Muhammad, where he got them from? Correct? So when you quote for me and you say, this is what he said, and you did not quote everything, that because you are showing that you are stupid, ignorant, and you are insulted your God, and you take his side saying that Allah is wrong, Muhammad is a liar, this is unproven theory, nobody worship three daughters of Allah. This is unproven theory. If we go in different verse in the Quran, we will find the following. Look what you, do, look what you did to your prophet. Now, all the spanking is coming to your prophet because of this. Hmm? Chapter 53, verse number 19, and here we see where Muhammad, he recited the, the, the satanic verses, if you remember. It says here, Have you seen Allah and Al-Uzza? And the other one, the third, the goddess Manat? What? For you, the male, six, and for him, the female. So Allah here complaining that they gave him three daughters, but he did not give him a boy. But the one you are quoting for me, he said, this is unproven theory. Nobody did that. So what you did, you proved to us that you take a side of somebody making this is not a true, saying it clearly, this is not a true. This is unproven theory. There's nowhere it's mentioned that the Arab used to worship a God who have three daughters, which means it's a fabrication. And I understand this guy is saying that due to his ignorance, he is a Christian minister, he is not a doctor in Islamic history, or neither in history. And as you see, I'm getting you busted from your book. Are you going to say to me, this is unproven theory? Actually, uh, the 
the exhibition of Khalid ibn Walid where he killed one of the daughters of Allah Let me find the reference. This is story proving to us what? That you Muslims and Muhammad, he believe that the daughter of Allah is true. Let me find the reference <laughs> okay oh boy let me try to find it in english i have it in arabic it's very easy uh, but we need to find it in english And now what he will say? Uh, he'll say, uh, you know, we Muslims don't believe in this garbage, but this is your Islam, my friend. This is your garbage. Let us see. Uh, All right. This is Hisham Ibn Al Kelbi book. All right. This is your scholars. And now let us see the English translation. And everybody will be laughing at you, and we will die laughing at your stupid prophet and his fiction stories. In the year of victory in Al Fatah, the prophet uh, summoned Khalid ibn Walid, and he said to him, Go into the tree of the valley in the valley of Nakhla. This is, by the way, this is the name of the book, the book of idols, page number 24. This is your Muslim book, not my book. And by the way, we will show you the same reference from the book of Ibn Kathir. And cut it down. Khalid, he went therefore, and he, you know, like he went and etc. And he did, you can read the story. And then Muhammad, he sent him back. He told him, I cut the tree and I did as you said. Okay. So Muhammad, he said to him, No, go back. You did not finish your job. Why? Because he did not kill the daughter of Allah. So he sent him back. And there, when he arrived, look what happened. Who reported from his father had related to him that the author blah 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 al uzza was the she devil who which used took frequent tree in the valley of nakhla when the prophet captured mecca he dispatched Khalid. are we losing connection don't tell me i'm losing connection are we Guys, is the condition good? I hope not. All right. So let's go back. I think it's working fine. So he dispatched Khalid to kill this woman who she is the daughter of Allah. What her name? Al Uzza. Al Uzza. All right. We will find a tree. Cut down the first one. Khalid went and he cut down. And then he returned to report to the Prophet. And he asked him, saying, have you seen anything there? Khalid he replied, said, no. He cut the tree. He did not see anything. The prophet ordered him to return and cut down the second tree. What a drama. <laughs> he asked him what? 
go again did you see there something and he said no i just saw the tree i cut the tree as he told me okay so the prophet ordered him to return and cut down the second tree he went and cut down on his return to the uh, and, he, and then he returned to report to the prophet that he cut the second tree the prophet said to him have you seen anything there <laughs> the guy said no Khalid and Sir said no thereupon the prophet ordered him to go back and cut down the third tree he said no Khalid and Sir said no thereupon the prophet ordered him to go back and cut down the third tree here we go I mean are you going to send the guy why you didn't tell him from the beginning cut the three trees and that's it when Khalid arrived to the scene he found an Ethiopian looking woman, a woman she looked Ethiopian, she, she had to be darker skin. Islam is a racist cult, as you know. So she had to be an African with darker skin, which, uh, like, suppose she's acting crazy. Her, her hair is all over the place, and her hard place on her shoulder, uh, gnashing and uh, grat gratting her teeth behind her stood. A person this is his name who was then uh, the custodian of al uzza the guy who take care of al uzza the guy there he was the one who take care of the daughter of allah al uzza the idol when uh, when this guy he saw Khalid, he said oh do al uzza so this is al uzza remove the veil and truck up my uh, these sleeves Summon up the strength and deal, uh, and deal Khalid. I mean, blah, 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 okay, and then so Khalid, anyway, he took the his sword and he killed Al Uzza, he slaughtered her. Let us uh, scroll down in the in the page so we can read the rest of the story. After he killed her, she crumbled into ashes. See, this is a whole reporter story. After he killed her, she crumbled into ashes. Then he cut down the tree and Khalid, he went back to Muhammad and returned to Muhammad to report to him what he did. Thereupon the Prophet said to him, that was Al-Uzza. Do you see it? So yes, the Arab, including Muhammad, they believe that Allah have three daughters and Al-Uzza is a real person, not a fiction person. And you Muslims agree with those stories, believe in them, print them in your books, teach them to your children, that your prophet, he killed the daughter of Allah. So when you quote for me a person saying that this is improving theory that the Arab used to worship a God who have sex with other God and have three daughters, that is, an, that is a statement of ignorance, my friend. Regardless if he is a Christian or not, doesn't matter. And the funny you say to me, he is a Christian scholar. Scholar in what? Here we go. We prove him wrong in two seconds. What scholar? Or he is a scholar of your choice. So, if we go back to the article here, where he said, that the theory claimed that the pagan deity, the moon god, named Allah, was married to the sun god and, uh, and, uh, and the stars were daughters. Uh, and uh, he's saying this story, uh, theory, the fact that the, the, uh, the crescent moon symbol is found in many flags. But this is not the reason for this. This is, this is, this is a funny statement. We don't we don't say this because the Muslim they have uh, the the symbol of the of the moon in the top of their mosque. You just, we just showed you the Quran. We just showed you Muhammad sending um, sending his men to kill the daughter of Allah. So my friend, this person, with my respect to him, he is an ignorant. I can say it to him in his face, and I invite him to call me. And as you see, nobody can really can this can argue with me about what he said. And look what happened here. If we ask our brother here, can we find the word Allah in any existing book? 
called Arab invade Arabia? He said to you that the first Bible translated to Arabic, it was uh, in the ninth century. This is mean more than 300 years after the Muslims invade. That's mean under the influence of Islam. The Christians are being killed even if after they say Allah. So what if they say different name? But look what he said here. He said, uh, Islamic propaganda machine in the West is actively pushing for the use of the word Allah instead of God in the Western language, especially in English. The sole purpose of this uh, push is to promote Islam and render it in acceptable mainstream, but he is doing the same. I mean, how come you don't want them to promote Allah as a word? You just did. You yourself, you just said, you just said it's not, it's not a moon god. And the Arab Christian, they use it. So why you, why they cannot do it themselves? And then you will see him saying, uh, let us see what he said, which I find very funny. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. He don't want the Western to use the word Allah, but he, he is saying the Arab, it's okay for them to use the word Allah. <laughs> he is said, he is said that some Christians are using the word Allah. Here we go. Read carefully. I was particularly saddened, saddened to see several English Christian website posting the English Bible text with the word Allah substituting for God as an attempt to witness to Muslims. In doing so, they have uh, individually asserted the Muslim claim that Allah is the name of the true God. <laughs> So he said that some Christians are doing a stupid thing by using the word Allah in the English website instead of using the word God. So why you are saying it's okay for a Christian, Arab Christian, to use the word Allah for God? Do you see here? People, do you see? So this potato, he caught for us, but he did not quote the whole story. This guy, he don't agree. He is saying that now, we Christian, Arab Christians, Middle Eastern Christian, would use the word Allah. And we have it in the translation of the Bible. It's okay. For us, it's a word mean God. But look, when he mentioned for us, it's a word mean God, he just again proved Islam to be false. Why? He don't want to follow the God of Islam, Allah, as a name. He is saying it's okay to use it as a word mean God, and this is what the whole article is saying. It's used as a word as God, not as a name. But all of us we knew that you Muslims believe that Allah is a name, not a word being God. And this is your Islamic website, Fatwa, you know about what to use is is the word is, is the word allah is a word mean god or it is a name question the name allah can be translated as god for new muslims it's okay if you translate as god it's okay however it is a name it is a name all perfect praise to be to Allah, blah, 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 okay? The name Allah can be translated as God for new Muslims who do not know Arabic language. Just as we translate the name, the, uh, the, uh, uh, translate for them, the meaning of the Quran, 
in order to teach them the mean the, the 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 religion of Islam. As for translation, translating the name, the name, you see, it's a name for, for the Arab Christians, this guy, he don't call it God by a name when we say Allah. He just used the word God any any anytime he wanna say God, he say Allah. So he's replacing the word God with the word Allah. But this is a false narrative. For Allah is the mean is the main name for the God of Islam. And then we will go soon for what that name means. So the name Allah with God while translating means of the Quran, Hadith, or book of Islamic knowledge. We do not think that this is a, a, is a principle. Rather, it is an obligation to leave the name of Allah in its original form. Because the name of Allah is a proper name of our Lord. So there in the article, he is saying to you, it's just a word meaning God. This is how we use it. Here in you Muslim, you say this is a name. This is not a word meaning God. And this is how we use it. Now let us go to the name. Actually, in his uh, post, he made something funny. And I find it hilarious when Muslim try to answer us. Look what he said. I challenge you to refute what the Arabic Christian scholar himself said, and we, we did already refute it in two seconds. I would also like anyone to read this comment and to the director of the Arabic outreach, which we should mention his name, all right? And then he says, your Christian prince fooled you into thinking that Abdul is the only Muslim when they actually Christian too. I'll just, just show, show you how stupid. You see, Abdul, Abdul, is you Muslims, do you remember the guy when the guy, his name is a Sheikh, he said there's a guy, his name is Abdul, and the other one, his name is what, I forgot. You call yourself Abdul. Secondly, the name you quote for me, his name is Abdul Masih, which means he is a slave of Allah, or a slave of the Messiah. Al Masih. Slave of Al Masih. So he, his name, witness that he is the slave of Jesus. So Abdul, Abdul is the bent who is one talking to you are Abdul because you call yourself by this and you worship Allah We don't worship Allah. This guy. He worshiped the Messiah. His name is Abdul Messiah Secondly, you idiot. Look what you did You said the Abd El which mean the worshipper of you are a certified donkey El does not mean of El is the word God El is the word God and let me get you busted to show everybody that you Muslims, you have no idea what are you talking about. And because your prophet is a thief, you say things, we laugh at it. If we go in the Quran, we will find that you Muslim, you say Israel as an example. If we ask you, what Israel? What Israel? What does that word mean? You don't know. Why? Because Muhammad is a thief. He took it from our Bible. Not a single Muslim, not even Muhammad knew what Israel mean. Il, at the end of the word, this is, not a, this is not a word, this is a sentence. This is a sentence. Israel is not a word. It's a name as a verse, as a sentence given to this man, Jacob. But because Muhammad is a fraud, he don't know what the Quran did not explain to us how this guy, Jacob, became Israel. You see in the stupid Quran, do you remember when when uh, when the dad he was making fun of Jacob struggling with God? Do you remember the video? If I was there in the stage, I will humiliate this idiot in two seconds. Because when the Quran mentioned the word Israel, it's meaning you agree with the story in the Bible. Because this is what Israel means. The person who struggled with God. So you adopted the name, but you do not know what the main name mean. But you refuse the story. But you cannot tell us how Jacob became Israel. Why? Because you are certified donkey like your prophet. So Il is the word God. Now if we go to your Quran, the same as we go to Mikael, Gibrael, all those names, Ishmael, all of those are belong to the God of the Christian, not to the God of Islam. Otherwise, where we can find even your religion? You have 99 names of Allah, none of them, one of them is Il. 
Now you say that il mean the, right? This is an Arabic, you idiot. The, the name, the Allah is not an Arabic word. This can be true if, if Allah is an Arabic word. But if we go in the Quran, chapter number one, we will find the, the following. It says here, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You will notice that the first sentence where it says Allah is different from the second Allah. What happened? Anyone notice what is missing? Let us make a line, a thin line. Here we have a letter. Here we don't have it. Do you see it? Let us highlight the letter with something shiny. Here we have a letter. Here we don't have it. What happened? If Allah is a name, then we cannot take a letter from the name. I cannot take the letter G from Jesus unless it is not part of the name. So why the letter is gone from the name? Because simply it's not part of the name. As simple as that. So what the verse is saying, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, the second verse says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So look what, what happened. Alhamdulillah, I'm sure this guy is so sorry now for what he did. Lah. Li in Arabic mean too. Lah is the name of your God. So you are a certified donkey again like your prophet. Your God name is not even Allah, it is Lah. And if we go right now and we search, who is Lah? Let us do that. We go to Prophet Google, peace upon him. We type la. La. What la? It is the moon god. La. The Egyptian god, moon god. La. Hmm? That is Lah, the moon god. That is the truth. So, is it a theory and proven or not? If we go right now and we check the name of Mecca, you will find the Quran saying, Il is a word mean God. Al is a word mean God. Al is a word mean God. In the ancient Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew, let me show you. Hold on. You see, guys, you need to read. You need to educate yourself. Education is very important, you know. The meaning of Israel, 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 sorry. What is Al in the ancient Hebrew? God. Do you see it? Al, between two brackets, God. At the end of the letter and at the end of the name, they add sometimes the, the name of the, the word God or sometimes they put it in the beginning. So most of names like Gabriel, Mikael, etc. used to be Mikael, Gabriel, Daniel, Ishmael, Al. This is why it's written in capital letter because it is a word by itself which means God. So, al la Al is a word meaning God. La is the name of the God. 
Are we getting the point? Al, when you put the word Al, in Arabic, the word Al mean that. But remember, this is not an Arabic word anyway. This is not an Arabic word. La is a stolen word from the Aramaic. And this word it was very popular in Egypt. Some they say that the origin of it, it is uh, 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 Egyptian, but I don't agree with that because all the new studies prove, and even old ones, that people of Yemen, they worship the god La, which is the moon god. And actually the temple of al Makkah is the same name of Makkah. Let me show you something here. If we go in the yellow pages of Muhammad book, which is called the Quran, we will find the Quran have strange name for Mecca. Chapter three, verse number 96. Do you see it? Mecca became Bekka. Mecca became Bekka. But how that can be? You cannot change the name. The answer is very simple. Bekka is how it is pronounced for some people. Mecca is how it's pronounced for some people. As an example, the Aramaic themselves. They have the same letter can be pronounced, depending what kind of Aramaic you are. A person who speak the first version of Aramaic, or a Aramaic who live in Iraq, or Aramaic who live in Syria, or Aramaic, etc. So they have different pronunciation for the same letter. So they switch letters. So the letter uh, uh, M, it can be switched ba, etc. And that can happen in many words. And we can give examples about other words too. So Mecca is Bakka. If you ask a Muslim, is it Mecca the same Bakka? He said yes. However, if we go and search for the temple of Yemen, which is the temple of the moon god, we find that its name is Al Makka. Makka. But it is Makka, not Mecca. The fact it is the same. Why? Because the people of Yemen they exchange the letter ka with qa the same as we saw with the aramaic so in chapter 48 verse number 24 it says makkah the people of yemen when they pronounce the letter ka they switch it to qa and this is even happening now every day i mean in the, in the middle east in many countries like as an example in egypt if your name is george you know, if you need, let's say, uh, 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 the letter Ja, they say Gi, Gib, Gib Hagatak. Hmm? But it's Ja, it's G. They say Gi. They have different pronunciation for the word. They switch the letter. And this is their style of saying words. So, Makkah is the same as Mecca, the Temple of Mecca. This is why we find that in the Kaaba, there's a Yemeni corner. Why it's called Yemeni corner? Because that Yemeni corner have stones from the temple of al Makkah. Let us go and search for them. You will notice that the Yemeni corner or the corner of Yemen have different stones have nothing to do with the Kaaba structures even the colors are different that's mean those stones are coming from different location they are not from the area so who why they are there those are stones brought from the temple of al Makkah, the moon god temple in Yemen Do you understand? And they place it there so the Arab do not need to go all the way to the temple of Al-Makkah in Yemen. They can do Hajj to Al-Makkah in Saudi Arabia, 
in the Arabian Peninsula or in the in the area of what it's called Mecca now. It was a replacement, it was a, a clone of the temple, the huge temple actually, we cannot compare between this little room and the temple which was the biggest temple of the moon god in the area. So they took stones from the temple of the al Makkah and they placed it in the corner of the Kaaba. And this is why Muhammad, he said, those who touch the Yemeni corner and the black stone, Allah erased, all this, so the, the, their sin is erased. He did not say Allah, sorry for that. Their sin is erased. How you, how you can erase a sin by touching a stone? How that can be? If we go to the book of Hadith, you will see Muhammad making it clear that touching stones and Yemeni corner is a must. And if you touch them, they erase your sin. Let us show, show the reference. Give me a second. And Muhammad, he always do that and he never stop touching them, worshipping them. The Muslim, they will say he's not worshipping them, so why you touch them? Tell us. They are stones. They are just a stone. Muhammad is a pagan person, the same as his family, the same as his grandfather, the same as his uncle, who refused to accept Islam. Even he is the one who must be loved to Muhammad. Yet, he did not accept Islam. He knew that Muhammad is a fraud. Uh, let us see where is the hadith. I'm looking for it. Uh, Here we go. This is the hadith, and the Muslim they cannot say it's weak. We will laugh if you say that. A person he asked Abu Abdul Rahman, "Why do you on I only see you touching those two corners?" He said, "I heard the Messenger of Allah says, touching them erase sin." Do you see it? Touching them erase sin, and this is not a daif hadith. And we can show you tons of hadith, your prophet, he keep going around them and touch them non-stop. He is possessed with those stones. Huh? When Muhammad is happy, he touched the Yemeni corner. When he is unhappy, he comes to the Yemeni corner and he cry for it. Do you see it? This is the Yemeni corner. The stones which is coming from the temple of al Makkah, which is in Yemen, which is the moon god. Scientists, they thought for long that al Makkah temple used to be the sun for to worship the sun. But now they were able finally to read the words or the language which was written in the, in the, in the stones which is not in Arabic, which is proven again that Yemen had nothing to do with the Arab. Because why they are, why the temple there is built and the language there is not Arabic, but yet the people there are Arab as they claim. That's not, kind of, doesn't make sense. The same as Syria, not the land of the Arab. The same as Iraq is not the land of the Arab. The same as the Kaaba itself is not the land of the Arab, for the Arab is not an ethnic. But you see here how Muhammad is possessed with touching stones. Claiming that the stones erase your sin. He have to touch the stones. Why? Muhammad, he prayed to Allah five times. Okay, Allah is in the sky. Why you not touch the stone? Give me a reason why you want to touch the Yemeni corner. What is the Yemeni corner present for you? They are stones. 
Do you see it? All those hadith are sahih. The Prophet used to touch the Yemeni corner and the stone in each tawaf. Each time he go around like a cockroach. We ask them what the black stone for. They say, oh, this is Allah. He sent the black stone, brother, from heaven, brother. Do you remember, guys, when I recorded the chat with the Muslim website who they are trying to convert Christians into Islam? And I asked them why the Prophet, he kissed the stone. They said to me, because the stone is holy. I don't know if any of you have the video. I said, and why the stone is holy? They said, because the Prophet kissed it. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So the guy who his name missed him for location, the father of the Muta Prophet, you fail and you expose your prophet, big deal. Because not even one of you knows what Allah means. And as you see, it's a name. It's not the word mean God. It is a name. So what the name mean? God? You do not know. For you are a thief. You took it, you do not know what it is, the same as the rest of the names. If we open the Quran now, we ask, okay, Jibreel, what Jibreel mean? They don't know. Israel, they don't know. Isa, who's Isa? We don't know. What Isa mean? They don't know. What Musa mean? They don't know. What Adam mean? They don't know. <laughs> not a single Muhammad and he knew what he is reading because Muhammad is a thief. He stole names of the Gog and Magog. What does that mean? I don't know. What Maria mean? They don't know. So what do you know? What do you know then? Nothing. I'm a Muhammadan. And we Muhammadan, we have big mouth. We talk too much, we say nothing. Muta, okay, Muta is, you, uh, let me explain to you what Muta, this is a very, but anyway, so we refuted the, 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 the comment that somebody saying that Arab Christian used the word Allah, we know that, and I said that many times, but this is because they are under the Islamic filthy occupation for hundreds of years under ISIS. They are using the word Allah and still they are killing them. Actually, the Islamic court of militia, mil the, the, the militant militia country, they forced the Christian not to use Allah by word. And here you see how even your Islamic stupidity exposing your stupidity. You just said that an Arab Christian or an whatever, I don't know where he's from, he said that Arab Christian they use, but you Muslims, when you notice that using those names or using the word as a word mean God, it's not for your benefit. So what do you do? You take a Christian to court and you forbid them from using the word Allah in any book or translation or a church. Why? Because in those countries, they notice a lot of Muslims leaving Islam. And they thought about it, why? They said, okay, maybe because they are using the same word Allah when they preach to us about God. Allah just for Muslims. <laughs> so you idiot. Double standard, hypocrite cult, stupid cult. We smack you. My fingers is over all over the bum of your prophet every day. Hmm. Smell bad. Okay. Disgusting. Do you see the hypocrisy? They took Christians to court. They take them to jail if you use the word Allah. But in the West, because Muslims are weak, they are trying to promote this cult. They want you to use the word Allah. But in the French country, when they are in control, oh, don't use the word Allah. This is only for us.
garbage in, garbage out. Now answering the one who spoke about muta. Muta is you renting a Muslim woman for a few hours or a few days for the purpose of sex. Muhammad, he, as a prophet of the moon god, the sexual god Allah, he agree with everything Allah, he, he present sex. This is why the heaven is about sex, the earth is about sex, everything is about sex. So Muhammad, he says, if any man, and this is Sahih Bukhari, if a man and a woman agree, and look between two brackets, the Muslim they put for you, marry temporarily marriage. Have you? What marry temporarily me? Hey Muslim fornication. If somebody wanna marry your daughter temporarily, and he wanna pay her ten dollar temporarily. Do you agree? Are you proud? Actually, if you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will find that the Arab, they have a very open life, sexual life. Very, very open. All the family of Muhammad, they used to be homosexual. Read my books, all is authentic Islamic reference. All is authentic Islamic reference. Every single person of the family, Muhammad was a homo. And actually, even Muhammad, his house was full of it. If you remember once, there's a guy, he came to debate me. And I said to him, you see, if, if you say to a Muslim, read for me this hadith, to him, read this hadith, he will say, I didn't accept it, this is bad, this is not true, etc. So I said to him, how come your prophet, uh, he don't have anything against uh, homosexuality? He said, this is not true. Let me show you a hadith. And he quoted the exact hadith I wanted him to read. Before he started, I said, stop, please. But isn't it this hadith is da'if or something? He said, no, 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 it's not da'if. I said, are you sure? He said, I'm very sure. He said, are you sure? He said, I am sure. And then he quote, until he arrived where he says that the prophet, he kicked the homo from his house. What he's doing in his house? Omar, he have, a, he have a, a gay in his house. Muhammad, he have a gay in his house. All the Sahaba, they have gays in their house. What they are doing there? And not only that, if you go in the Quran, you will find that the punishment for being a gay is just to insult you. If you are a lesbian, they will jail you until you die. If you are a gay, you can be forgiven. But if you are a lesbian, no forgiveness. They put you in jail until you die. Read carefully. And if any of your women are guilty of loudness, women only, you see there's no men in this crime. Take evidence of four uh, reliable witnesses from among you against them. And then you put them, you, 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 you confine them in their houses until death claim them. Look how harsh the punishment. Jail until you die. But if two men, they do that. Do you see it? Two men, you see, there's no, there's no women here. Here there's only women. Here there's only men. What is the punishment? If two men, they are homo of doing that, Punish them. If they repent, okay, let them go. And how you punish them? We go to the interpretation. It says beat them by sandals. Insult them and beat them by sandals. Chapter 4, verse number 15 and 16. And we can go right now and read the interpretation for the, the, the thing. So Muslim will not say we are making things up. Because you know them, Muslims. Have you ever seen a Muslim? He don't complain. He's a Muslim. It doesn't matter what you say. You say you are lying. It's not true. It doesn't say that. Liar. Hmm? I challenge you, you are a liar. I'm showing it to you on the screen. Liar. It doesn't say that. It's in the screen. A liar. 
Ja. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. And when two of you, and we showed you it says men, they do that homosexual intercourse. Do you see that it says homosexual in front of your eyes? Do you see the word homosexual? This is Tafsir al Jalalain. This is a big fat scholar for the Muhammadan. Okay, what do we do then? Punish them both with insult and beat them with sandals. And the brother, if they repent, let them go. So how come the women, if they do that, you jail them until they die, but if somebody is a homo having sex with other homo, you let him go. Is that my translation? Is that my website? No, this is at the seat. Let me post the link for you. Here we go. Open it and read it. Actually, if you beat a homo with sandal, he gets excited. I mean, what kind of punishment this punishment is? Is that like sexual entertainment? You want to spank him? Huh? This is Islam. Going back to the article, the guy he mentioned, I hope I did not cl close the link. Did I close the link? Oh, no, I did not close the link. This guy, he said, and this is why he don't want, this guy, he don't want to quote for us the rest. Uh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> Look the summary, my friend. Abdul, the one who quote this article for me. Summary. Summary. Even though the understanding of this his his, his uh, character, which means the God in Islam, is horribly messed up in Islam. Do you see it? Who's next? I challenge you to download my video, Muslim Fornicator, to download my video, post it as it is. And I challenge you, you idiot, to tell them how you did not find my introduction in sex and Allah in Fatih Bari, and you say this not exist, you and Fifi. You are so cute. You are so cute, Fufu and Mumu Suso. Bunch of kids. Anyone have a question? By the way, we are going to go live on air after we finish from here in my other account, the quality of life. So if any of you is interested, uh, we have the link and they're down in the info. Uh, you can join us. And let us see. <sighs> All right, let us give you a link. So in case any would like to join us. Yeah, the admin is posting the link anyway. So my friend, we Christians, we speak with the truth, and the truth will set us free. And that's why they don't dare to debate us. You see, if debating me is so easy, can you imagine how many Muslims will be lined up to call me and debate me and getting me busted? You see, always I find, I, I get jealous actually from some Christians, because Muslims, they want to call them, but they don't call me. But I understand. No, they don't want to call me. The one who called me, he will leave Islam. You call me. Once, twice, three times, you leave Islam. That's it.
If you are a person who have blue eyes, blonde hair, don't speak Arabic, they will line up to debate you about Muhammad, brother. Scientific miracle in the Quran, brother. Brilliant filter. It's proven. There is a scientist from the planet named Yama Adullah Yama. And it is in the Quran full of science. But what? what? Who is the Muslim when to show us the science of the Quran? The only science I see that renting a woman is a great business in Islam. That is a science to convince somebody to rent his daughter or rent his sister. And you know what make it more even funny? The Muslims in their website, when they explain the muta, they don't feel shy to say that she is a rented woman. I mean, can you believe it? There's no problem. You see, there's two kinds of Muslims. There's Muslims who they are proud about the religion, and those usually like ISIS, uh, etc. You know, they say it as it is. And there's Muslims in YouTube and who live in the West. They try to promote their garbage by fabricating stories. Those who they are proud about their cult, <clears throat> they say yes, we Muslims believe in renting women. This is alislam.org website. <coughs> hmm? This is not my website. This is not my translation. This is not my text. I'm just reading. Look what it says. What is the muta? In the book of etc. blah blah blah, the muta or nikah, etc. blah 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 blah. Okay, you can read yourself. And then it says, in some work, a special terms is applied to women who participate in muta mustajara. Mustajara means rented or rented women <laughs> and those muslims they want to convince us that they believe in jesus rented women and you believe in jesus are you sure abdul Rented women? Muta is, a, is considered as a kind of rental because in general, men basic aim of this kind of marriage enjoyment of women. How you call it marriage? The women she got paid. The women she got paid. There's a pillars for the muta. Here they will explain to you the formula. First, you have to agree about how much. Second, you have to agree about the time, how long. It's a prostitution, officially prostitution. So you go to a woman, you say, hey, my name is Abdul, your name is Fatima or Aisha, how much you charge me to boom boom for you do, for three hours? If she say, then go to the bedroom or the elevator. Is it me who is saying this definition or this your Islamic website? And by the way, this is written in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 24. So my friend, is we are not debating about the name of the God. Who cares about what you call your God? Let us say for the sake of argument, the Muhammadan, they changed the name of their God from Allah to Jesus. Still you are devilish, still you are following Satan. Changing the name or having different name, that is not the issue. The issue is what you believe in. Do the God of the Christians teach muta temporarily? You take a woman for the bed, you pay her wages, she take off her panty, or teach that you can suckle her, suckling a stranger woman, a stranger, a stranger man, or having sex with the children. And then the Muslim, they start fabricating stories, says a, a prophet in the Bible, he, have, he married uh, three years old. Uh, muta is okay in Shia and Muslim. That's not true. Muta is okay in Shia and Sunni. The Sunni is just to change the name. If you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see that the Shia and the Sunni, they still practice until now. But what the Sunni did, 
they are always people of you know deception so they fabricate reasoning so what the muslim sunni they do now they have something that's called zawaja friend as an example what is zawaja friend you have a woman you like her she like you you want to have sex but you don't want to get married and have children and live together so what do you do you make a contract it's called zawaja friend it's like boy boyfriend you go to the hotel once a week or whatever you want a horny you do boom boom if the police come to stop you to check what are you doing you show them i have a paper it's zawaja friend <laughs> They have a format of marriage, the Sunni. It's called a travel marriage. Travel marriage, student marriage. What is that? If you are going to travel or a student, let us say you're a businessman or a, or a student, you are going to stay in some country temporarily. You go to a woman, you fool her, you tell her, I want, I want to marry you. You are going to stay, let us say, in Los Angeles for two weeks or a month or even a year. You fool this woman, you say to her, I want to marry you because it's haram, brother. You cannot sleep around. So you marry her. But in, in, in your heart, you don't want to marry her forever. You just want to marry her until you finish your study. So you have a woman with panty in the bed. When you finish your few weeks of study, you say to her, bye-bye, I have to leave. You are divorced. And this is your payment. So the Muslim Sunni, they still practice the same. And actually the Hadith confirm that the Muslim Sunni, they practice the muta after the death of Muhammad. And during the death of Muhammad, during the Caliphate Umar, and during the Caliphate Abu Bakr, and during Muhammad life. All right. Any comment from Muhammadan? Now, because today nobody knows that I'm going to go because I changed the time, you know, and people in Indonesia, many countries, they are asleep. So we don't have many people here. Only like 600, 700. All right. But it's okay. Uh, we will go live after we finish here. Let us see. Give me a second. Lord have mercy. As always, I say, I find the stupidity is amazing. They try to fight us, they help us. Always. All right. So this is the topic will be for my coming program in the other account, Quality of Life. Uh, you know, I made a video about uh, prices of phones. Short videos, like not even 50 seconds. But it looked like this uh, uh, short 50, 50 second provoke some people. So some, they say to me, one of them said, CP, I will write something very provocative. So we will discuss how, pro how I mean, how, how this can be true and why this person is upset. And... Uh, you know, how a human being he think, how people think, the logic of a human being. So if you like, our topic is not really about phones, but we will talk about phones. But the purpose is how we spend our money and how we can be wise, how they fool us and how we spend, how we do what they want against our will, how we spend all our month working like crazy, very hard, losing... Uh, uh, time from our life and then we spend it for a little tiny phone so some they get offended of what i said i want to analyze how people think and why you are upset and why we are get upset when somebody says to us something truthful why i provoke you how this is happening so if you care for such a topic we will be live in, it says, 40 minutes. All right. Should I change the time, guys? So people in Indonesia, they can join us. What do you think? Shall I change the time or keep it as it is? <clears throat> uh, 
uh, Sam, I will be uh, in different channel. Here we are almost done. Change the time, keep the time. What do you think? What Indonesian Christian must do because in the Bible, Indonesia, this is translation, refuse it. Take any word from that Bible translation using the word Allah and put the word the Lord. Put the word Elohim, put the word God, whatever, you know, in your language. Don't use Allah. That is a false use. As you see, the Muslim agree that Allah is a name, not a word meaning God. So we are using the wrong name as a word God, which is not right. And why we want to use the word Allah? Are we short of words? The Hebrew Bible is there, the Aramaic Bible is there, and we do not need to use the word Allah. Keep change. And now I know why Muhammad, he, he got dizzy and he lost his mind. He asked them a question, should I change or not to change? So they started saying to him, change, not to change, change, not to change. So Muhammad, he went to the moon and he thought he is, uh, he is in the galaxy, uh, but he went to Ethiopia. It was the Euphrates River. Change the time. Okay, what time? Change it for two hours from now, three hours from now. Da -da 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 -da. Keep it, keep it. How do you spell provocative? I don't know how to spell it. Are you asking me? Somebody told you I'm an English teacher. I don't know. I even have to say the word correctly. Hello. Alhamdulillah. I'm, this is what made me qualify to be a prophet, by the way. Because to be a prophet in Islam, you need to know, you do not need to read your name. And don't even try to read anything. So, like, I wish I am totally illiterate, because that will make me a prophet. I would be qualified. What is missing is to find a girl, she is six years old, to be a wife. And then to find some Jewish, you know, Jewish people and Christians to attack them, take their wallet. And then I will get a mule, you know, and this mule can take me to the heaven. So you have one. And, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's very simple. So, like... Uh, very easy. Are you guys correcting me in the text how to say it? Okay, let me let me teach you how Christian friends read English. I, uh, if you ask me, I read the English in this way: provocative. Okay, what is the origin of this word? That somebody he was a brew. And he was vowing to be captive, uh, captive, captive. Yeah, it's coming from the word katavayan, which means kataburo, which means uh, Allah knows best. This is, by the way, true story, and we can find it in Sahih Bukhari. All right? Um... Any Muslim have any comment? Anyone? No Muslim have anything to say? No? Provoke? Okay. Brother in my city, Muslims, his name is Burak. Uh huh. Yeah, that's mean he accepts to be a mule. Because how you call yourself Burak when this which is a name of an animal which is a mule. You know? Yeah. To call yourself Burak or to call your son a Burak, that's mean you accepted your son that's a donkey. You are calling your son a donkey. How you call your son Burak? Hmm? three or five hours you know what uh, I will change the time to give the chance for the Christians in Indonesia to join us maybe I will make it go uh, an hour more 
What do you think, guys? Hour more? But still, it's going to be early. What the time now in Indonesia? What is the time now there? What color ink? Allah, he used the pen blue. Well, uh, Rene, I will, I will speak to you in a language women, they understand. Allah, he used eyeliner. This is why the prophet, he used to put eyeliner three times a day at least. For this is the, you know, the private pen of Allah. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He cannot leave the house unless he put eyeliner. Pretty Muhammad. You see, eyeliner can be used in the old days for somebody having illness in his eyes. But this guy, he had illness in his eyes 24 hours, 7 days a week, all his life. It's 4.26 a.m. Okay, I have, a, I have an idea for people who they are in Jakarta. You see, it looks like we have the time differences. And me as an Arab, we are genius. I come with an idea, we'll solve the problem. Why you don't change your clock and make it instead of 4.26 a.m., make it 4.26 p.m.? This way, we will have the same timing. Don't you know that the Prophet, he said that Allah come down in the third part of the night? Obviously, all of us, we should have one o'clock, according to the Prophet order. So, you are following the kuffar timing, but in fact, we should follow the true timing of Allah. All of us, we have third part of the night. Brother, can we meet in the third part of the night, brother? Brother, I live in Indonesia. Okay, where do you live? I live in Canada, brother. So, what is the third part of the night for? <laughs> What a stupid garbage religion. Oh, don't be cruel. What a cruel mean? You know, please don't, don't, don't make me dizzy with the English language. You know, like English is really starting from hot dogs. I don't want to go back in memory. You know, somebody invited me to eat hot dogs. You no. Know? American, they eat dogs. What's wrong with those American people? Did you hear the stories of those the, 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 in the Middle East during the Eid? They are slaughtering donkeys, uh, dogs, cats, and they are selling them to the Muslims as, a, as if it's a beef. <laughs> oh boy. You must learn from Allah, okay, like yo-yo, yeah. My English is daif, past. Yeah, it's daif. Actually, you know, here, actually, you need, you need to remember how not to let anything make you feel down. You know, when I say to myself, I'm going to go and teach people the truth, I know that my English is not that good. And actually, it used to be we are more horrible than now. You know, now like way better. Yet that did not stop me from doing what I want to do. That is a great example for all of us not to be worried of how to do it. Just be consistent. Have faith. And you will be able to accomplish your mission. A person who don't believe in what he can do he cannot do anything. You cannot do anything. If I say to me, to myself, well, you know, your English is funny. People will laugh at you. If you go right now, speaking, start speaking English, you know, you will see the text all over saying, hey, look what he's talking. And this is what they do until now, right? But I open my arms to the Lord and I said, I'm going to go. I don't know how to swim. I will go. If the Lord is with me, who could be against me? Right? You make fun of my English. You see, I don't speak good English and I did what I did to Islam. So what if I speak good English? I don't speak good English and my books now translated to many, many languages around the earth. And we... What if I speak good English? You know what I mean? So when you are limited, 
still you can be powerful because limitation can be exist only if you don't want to try and do what you think you can do i know i am sure i have the knowledge so what i am short of my english skills is not good so what i will make mistakes i will learn i will speak better by time and then i can do it better but if i don't start how do you want to learn how to swim if you don't jump in the water you cannot you cannot learn how to swim by virtual classroom you have to jump in the water so i i really i appreciate what the lord he gave us he blessed us with uh, we have people listening to us from around the world from everywhere i never thought actually i would be able to accomplish what i accomplish when i started online i saw many people they are converting to islam and that was very sad news for me i could not believe it how ignorant they are so i said i'm not going to let this happen i started in the programs long before pal talk it's called hear me and there's other program for chat and then i went to pal talk actually the muslims they are the one who invited me to pal talk and the muslims are the one who invited me to youtube and the muslims are the one who made me make page in twitter muslims make me page make page in facebook it was the muslims always it is muslims who made me make books because they were saying to me well if you are so much knowledgeable how come we never heard that you have a book I said okay we will have a book <laughs> we will have a book if this is what it's going to take to make you listen it's a good idea actually why not i will make a book i will make a book will make millions of muslims regret asking me to make a book for i will share the truth inside that book and you cannot handle the truth as simple as that and it's what happening do you notice when when the muslim they say like uh, someone like mimi and fifi they say to the muslim they want to debate a christian prince do you notice how much they are terrified they prepare they cut my video part pieces they don't want to debate me they want to just play the videos is that telling you how scared they are they are terrified they are talking to christian prince they knew if they let me talk they are no match so let us bully him let us smear him let us make stories about him but those stories help me because later we found everybody found that what they are saying is absolutely false they could not debate me so they decide to smear the person this is what they do to the the, the gentleman his name the apostate prophet you see, uh, there are some people they can handle pressure, and there are people people they cannot. Uh, Apostate prophet, you can tell he he is not good in handling pressure. Like he he get affected by what the Muslim they say. For me, I love. So they thought they can do to me what they do to this nice gentleman. They take advantage of you actually if you are a nice person. And the reason for that. The Muslims, they've been taught by the faith of Muhammad that Allah, he made us, he made us uh, subdued to Muslims. He made us accept humiliation. So a Muslim, he can humiliate us. If you go in the Quran, this is why when you are nice, speaking to them they don't take it like because you are a christian and jesus taught you to be nice and peaceful and loving no they take it as the quran said the quran says that allah he cursed us and he bitched over them like a tent of what of humiliation shame is bitch over them do you see it shame on us keep dreaming shame on you we made Muhammad the symbolic of shame everywhere 
and who can deny the truth? Nobody. I just changed the time on uh, the quality of life. Let us see what the time now will be to be sure it's accurate. Okay. It's going to be live in two hours from now. Is that good? Is that good? Two hours from now. Are we good with that? This is the link. Join us, join us in two hours from now. Two hours? Three hours? What three hours? No, it says two hours. Oh, you want it to be three hours? You no, know, I think two hours is fine because uh, people in Indonesia, they will wake up and, you know, everybody is welcome. Yeah, it's already, it says life in two hours. It's going to be, depending on your timing, you know, I don't know. In New York time, it is eight o'clock. Uh, different place in USA it's 7 I think in Jakarta now it's 7 a.m. in the morning already uh, no actually I mean it's already now 4 uh, 4 37 a.m. in the morning right yeah all right so I want to say thank you guys for being here I see you in two hours from now and until then please share the link with your friends invite them to join us Again, the topic there is totally different from Islam. There we speak as a family. And our topic is the interest of everybody who really he care for something better for his life. Uh, and if you are a person who get offended from what I say, you should know me by now. I say things as it is. I don't sugarcoat. I don't use bad language. But I don't do sugarcoating. You know, the Muslim, they say to you, Christian prince, he use a bad language, like the word panty. Well, Islam is about panty, what I can do. If I am speaking about the Bible, I will not use that word. The Muslim, they quote for you, like the Song of Songs. You say, how this, is, how this, is, how, how this can be the book of God? Now, this is a song, and this guy is not even talking about women. In your books, you are talking about women, literally. You describe even what is inside the private part of the woman. So the topic we talk about is dirty. So we cannot make it clean. In the other channel, there the topic is always going to be clean because we are not talking about Islam and we will not Islam be involved in our channel there. All right. Uh, can you uh, do a new live show with Amir ex Muslim for German public, please? Yeah, I did not actually receive a message from him for a while. Um, maybe I will contact him and see how he's doing at least. All right, guys. So see you soon. I hope we answer all the questions and the Muslims who they try, who dare to debate us, like this guy, Muslim for location. He got what he deserved. You always get what you deserve when you change Christian prince. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care. Remember, after two hours in this channel, and this is the link. All right, take care.